So here is the control for the sunspot unit. We're going to power it up. You're going to see it turns on. Once the software loads up, it's going to tell us what our, our default settings are. So 24 degrees Celsius. I'm going to press start and it's going to start a preheat cycle. So in 14 minutes, 55 seconds, the unit will be ready to run. Um, we can't do anything until it gets to that point. That would be the first thing you do in the morning when you came in and you'd set it to preheat. It uses electrical heat to get up to the preheat temperature and then it goes into standby mode. And after that, we're, we're ready to start at any point a cycle all day long, but that's the beginning. Okay, so while the preheat cycle is taking place, I'll kind of go over the sunspot assembly here. So how it works, this is what's preheating, and I can feel the warmth starting here in the pad, and that gets us up to the temperature to create the, the, the reaction between the gas and the platinum infused pad, which is what creates our, our, our uh, microwave IR beam that does the curing itself. So every HT200 comes with a telescopic mounting post that can hold two, two heads. So this would be what's called an HT200. An HT100 is the same with one pad. So basically with an HT200 or HT100 you get, you get one pad, one post. It's very common for customers to order uh, an HT200 with a second post uh, because each one of those controls can run one complete HD200, which is two pads. So in, in a situation in a room where perhaps we want three lamps on one wall and three lamps on another wall, that would be three HD200s supplied with an extra post so we can split one set of lamps that will run off of one control. Mm -hmm. um, installation, uh, we, we usually, when we install it, we, uh, we, we use a... Um, a T-nut machine, so we can embed it into the into the, the walls of your spray booth. Um, you or you can, can use, use bolts. Yeah, you can use bolts, you can use anchors, you can use whatever you want. We basically mount this. Uh, each unit comes with, I believe, 50 feet of cable to run from the head itself back to the, to the controller. Uh, the actual gas itself has to be uh, ran and installed by a certified gas technician. Um, we do supply the valve train for them to hook up. Uh, on, on the unit itself, there's two ways to operate the, uh, the Sunspot units. We can either, either run it by percentage of power, uh, which it's very common in, in a room, you know, say a 12 by 12 booth with three lamps, we, you know, we're potentially at 30% power to be able to achieve uh, our surface temperature of our coatings. Um, if you wanna, you wanna be really precise, the Sunspot also has a thermal camera, which will monitor the surface temperature of your components within the booth. The, the components in the booth are really the only thing that's going to heat up because the organic uh, content within the paint is what reacts to the, the Sunspot beam. Uh, if you had a bare metal frame or a rack within here, it would stay cool. The only, the only temperature- So similar to these pipes here, yeah. the, or this dust pipe, I mean, that won't get hot. No. No, just, just the paint itself. Okay. And, and that's the unique thing about the Sunspot system is it actually uses the paint as the heat source. So it, it's drying inside out. You're not getting surface skinning a product, trapping in moisture. Uh, you're, you're basically completely gassing that paint out from the inside out. And that's what completes a complete cure, you know, in, in eight to 12 minutes in most cases. Okay. Uh, if you're an air dry and convection ovens, dry it could be dry to touch it can be dry to pack and ship but you you know you're still gassing off sometimes a, a month after installation of a kitchen uh, in this case it is cured it's cured okay. it's hard and away you go. now what are those nozzles up top so within within the sunspot booth uh, here what we have are, is a recirculating air system so, so the exhaust is drawn in here. This would be the, the intake for, for uh, the recirculation air, which would then blow through these okay. chambers in the top and create a circulation to spread the heat around. I, I uh, guess you'd want to have that some kind of variable speed drive so you could control that airflow? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you can control it. Uh, the, the, in, in most booths, uh, in existing booths, when we mount this is one we designed and built ourselves. Um, it's not uncommon in a booth this size to have a single 8 inch port, which would be about 750-800 CFM. So there's okay. very little exiting, 
So in most cases, in an oven itself, there, there's very little need for any kind of air makeup. Now, if you had a flash area on the back of a reciprocating spray machine. Similar to what we have over here. In, in this case, it'd be very important to have uh, an exhaust here of say, yeah. 3,500 to 5,000 CFM, depending on the side, size, because if we're spraying solvent-based paint, um, we, we probably need to change the air in this entire booth probably two to three times a minute. Um, if you're spraying one door by hand, you know, it might take a minute and a half, two minutes to spray a door, that door is flashing off. It's a big difference when you're spraying 12 to 15 doors a minute, all at the same time, all gassing off and flashing off at the same time, it, it can overwhelm an operator. So okay. we have the need to exhaust the air for safety. And that's why you'd have these doors I see here also. Yeah. To keep this after right okay so you'd flash off in there they stay there for whatever time required yeah. and then from there we'd walk into the oven into the sunspot okay so we're back out here at the the, the uh, sunspot controller so again each one of these controls two lamps which would be each in each uh two lamps constitute one hd 200. Um, just a quick question bob i see on the bottom it says one and two i presume if you bought what you mentioned before, 100, yes. I guess you'd still have that same box, but it would only be for one unit operating, that's correct? Right. Okay. That's right, and, and, and there'll be a selection here. Uh, above, you'll notice here, that's the gas drain that I mentioned uh, okay. that, that we do supply. So your, your uh, gas technician would run to that and then take, take from there into the booth and, and attach to your HD200. Now the actual gas that the, uh, the, the gas trains? Uh, the, gas, the gas valves yep. are powered by this unit and connect right here at the top of the cabinet. This is what is going to dictate how much fuel leaves that. And once we start, you will actually hear those toggling on and on, on and off as it maintains the temperature of the potential part in okay. the booth. Now, what about this HMI you were talking about? So when, once you start getting into multiple units in a larger oven, uh, sometimes it's advantageous to uh, oven control. Okay. So this, this is a central control unit. So instead of having to set each in, a, in, in every individual HD200 uh, control, which we'll go through shortly, we can actually control it from a centralized unit. So it's like a remote control for a television. I just don't have to get up and go over and get all the other ones done. That's right. And, and if you have a larger oven, um, we, can, we can set it up with multiple zones. So we don't have to start uh, all the lamps. So if we only want to run uh, one set on each side because we're drying a small part, we can have it divided throughout the oven into multiple zones where we have full control. So again, once we can set our temperatures, our ramp times, we would hit start and the cycle would start. Now I can't get in and start the cycle. So now I've turned on all the zones, but I can't actually start the cycle until the preheat cycle on the uh, HD 200 is okay. complete. But once again, that's in the morning. First thing you do when you come in, you turn it on. Uh, 15 minutes later, you're ready to rock and roll and that stays on all day. So it's an instantaneous cycle start once the preheat. Now, now this is already mounted within some other kind of control box. I presume if I just buy the HDs, I don't get this big box? Uh, that's correct. Um, but we do have uh, a central connection panel that is available. Um, they're, they're standard in uh, four, uh, six, and eight unit configurations. So if you plan to expand down the road, we, we could have a centralized panel where everything can connect and mount, which uh, saves you from having individual connections for each unit. Oh, okay. Machine. It, it is an option we do supply and, and, and it, it, we usually size it uh, for what you have plus where you want to go if you do want to have the ability to expand. Um, but that panel would come with controls for potentially your oven, uh, your, your variable speed. It, it's all sized to what you have and what you need to do. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay, so we're back at the HD200 control and we've re reached our preheat and we're in standby mode. Now, there's, uh, there's, there's two ways we can run. We can either run with the probe, which is, like I mentioned earlier, is monitoring the surface temperature of the product in the oven. Um, another common way to run is a percentage of power. So if I come in here, 
if I hold the standby adjust button and I press the Celsius Fahrenheit, sorry, there we go. I just set it to no probe. So with no probe, that's where, that's where I can set it to a percentage of power. So again, if I hold the standby adjust button, you're gonna see I have a cure time, I have a gas percentage, and I have a ramp. And I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. If I go back to probe, you'll see when I go into standby and adjust. I now have a cure time, but I have a temperature. That's my surface temperature of my product and my ramp. So in, in, in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to a percentage of power. I'm gonna come in back into my adjustment setting. Okay, we are required Basically, so we got a gas percentage of 30. I'll put that. That's that's very common. Um, and again, this is stuff usually we work out while we're working with your coating supplier. Um, we can monitor the surface temperature of the product based on the cure time. We can find that magic number and then we can leave it. Cure time I'll set here to 12 minutes. In this case, we don't have a ramp timer. The ramp timer is how much time we're gonna allow the unit to get to that surface temperature. And I'm gonna go make your time to 12 minutes. So now, if I'm running constantly through this oven and I don't want it turning on and off, I just wanna be able to, to, to uh, Racks in, racks out, never stop, keep my, keep my product recirculating. If I hold this down and go all the way to the end on my cure timer, it will bring me to infinite mode, which will keep running. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. Number one, again, if, if I'm running a, a, an automated spray line where I'm filling a rack every seven minutes, I don't wanna have to turn it on and off, on and off because it's a constant flow of product. If, if I'm spraying by hand and it takes me two hours to spray a rack and it's drying in 10 minutes, I'm probably gonna wanna go with the time solution. Um, another, another application where we would run in infinite mode is if I have a constant through feed system, like a, a tow line pulling parts by a number of sunspot panels or a, or a conveyor line with finished pieces of furniture that are passing. Those are, those are a couple different common, uh, common avenues where, where we would wanna run in infinite mode. Okay, so once we've decided how we're gonna run, whether we're gonna run as a percentage, if we're gonna run um, uh, based on the probe, infinite, cure time, once we have that all, all set in, uh, the way we wanna run to start the system, you press start, and so right now I'm running infinite cure at 30% gas. Okay. So if we go in there now, I presume it's warm in there, inside the oven? Oh, she's warm, yeah. <laughs> So in here now, I would say this room is uh, definitely on the toasty side. And we just started. So that's the preheat, but they're instantly coming up to speed. So now if I take a look at my heat gun and I shoot at my pad, you can see we're at 365 degrees, 360 degrees and climbing. Now, if I had that set at 100%, you're probably going to see temperatures closer to 600, 600 or 700 degrees Celsius. Wow. And I'm already feeling the heat in here, so. And the floor, you got 50 so, degrees already just on the floor, and we just started those off. That's right. So we're at about, six, yeah, 65 degrees Celsius on the floor. Now, the reason why the floor is heating up is because the floor is a painted surface that, that is coated with organic content. If I take a look at this pipe, Put it in front of the... I'll put this pipe in front of the lamp. You'll see. Wow. That it's going to stay cool. And, and, and the only thing that's warming that up is the ambient temperature of the room from the floor, from my body that is heating up rapidly as I stand here. <laughs> because again, I'm, I'm, I'm made out of organic content, so I can feel the heat. I can tell just by the color of your face right now, it's toasty in here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, while I'm standing in this heat chamber, sweating to death, I'm gonna point out here that, uh, so again, each one of these is an HD 100, 
and two of them comprise uh, an HD 200. Um, you'll notice that it's design certified CSA, it's flame certified, flameless, and it's CSA approved, which uh, is very important. Um, and in here, we have uh, all the ratings for what we're running. So at natural gas, we're gonna go each one of these at, at 100%. Um, power would burn 13, uh, 13,500 BTUs an hour. Uh, propane, we would be 15,000 BTUs an hour. Um, the main difference between the two, and we need to specify usually when, at the point of purchase, is it's a, a different injector valve here. Um, and, gas drain. And, and a different gas strain. The, uh, the, uh, the ability to run natural gas and why we run propane in most cases is, is most plants don't have a high pressure natural gas line. So we need, we need five PSI of natural gas pressure to be able to use natural gas. Um, and if you call your natural gas supplier, they'll usually be able to tell you whether you have a high pressure line or you don't. Thank you, Bob.